Hey, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm going to build the gantry on my Voron 2.4 Pro Plus. So let's go ahead and get started. So today I'm going to work on the gantry on my Voron. And I'm actually pretty excited because I feel like with this step, I'm actually going to see a lot of progress. So again, pretty excited. So let's just take a quick look through the direction so we know what's all involved in this section. Now, each of my videos in this Voron series are about 20 minutes. So if it takes longer to, to finish this section of the installation guide, then I'll probably break it into multiple videos. But I, I actually think I'm going to be able to complete it today, at least this section. So let's just go through here. I've completed the A and B drives, the idlers. So a lot of this is already done and put together. Now I'm going to point out this XY bridge here, and that's actually part of this step, the XY bridge. You have two different ones in generic table and then an Ingus cable chains mail. I don't know what the difference between the two are, although this looks to be the generic. So it looks like basically I'm going to need my extrusions. The idlers I put together, or I'm sorry, the motors I put together. I'm just installing everything, so that looks pretty simple. Doing the rails, so that's lots of screws to put in. But just looking through this, it's really not that bad. So again, this should be pretty simple. And I'm hoping, I said I'm hoping to finish this today. I'm just scrolling through here, looking at everything, just making sure nothing looks funky. And I suggest this to everybody, look through the installation and make sure you're seeing everything. I want to point out, so the one issue I ran into is I couldn't find this XY bridge. Really, this was a simple print. I think it took about 30 minutes, but I'm just pointing out that this did not appear to come in the form box kit. Now, it's possible that I'm just not seeing it because, again, there are a billion parts but it's an accent piece, so it should stand out because most of the parts, there's more black parts than there are the accent pieces, which are red. So I went ahead and found this in the GitHub repository and printed it out. And I'll switch over and just show you that piece. So here's the missing part right here. And I've gone ahead and put in the heated inserts there in there. Now I tried to match the filament up and it looks pretty good. Now, one of the reasons why I'm building Boron is I wanted an enclosed printer so I could do ABS. I've printed this in PLA Plus. The only pet G I have turns out to be um, like a glossy red, and it just clashed too much for my sensibilities. So I don't think this is going to matter much but I'm going to keep this as PLA plus for now. And probably once I get the printer all put together, I'll break down and reprint this in ABS so I have it. But I just want to point out that this is the one piece that's missing. So let's start with the first step and we'll take a look and see where that leaves us. Now I have four extrusions left in the kit and this next step requires the E extrusion. And the E extrusion is actually the shortest. And let me switch over and I'll show both the directions and my desk view simultaneously so we can all see this. Now, if we look carefully in the image in the right hand corner, you'll see again that E extrusion. There's only one E extrusion and it is the shortest extrusion we have left. So I'm going to start with that. And then I believe we need to put in some T nuts and our motor. So let me get the parts out and we'll get started. So I have my M5 T nuts and I'm just going to get out, I think I need a total of eight. So let me count these out. Four, four, so that leaves me with eight. So let me seal the bag back up and put it aside. That way I don't spill anything. Now I also need, let's get the motor. 
and I'm trying to orient this exactly as it is in the drawing. Now it looks like, if I'm looking at the drawing correctly, that this piece should be on the inside right in here, if I'm interpreting this right. I'm going to put this aside, and let's slide in our key nuts. This will actually be much easier because I shouldn't have to, I should be able to slip these in. And I'm orienting them so the long part of the T-nut is pointed towards the center of the extrusion. Now these don't have any measurements, so I'm just slipping them in. And again, long part towards the center. It's pretty straightforward. So I've done this side, I'll do the other side and be right back. So as you can see, I have the T-nuts in on both sides. So there's a total of eight. And I'm going to need eight M510 button heads. So let's get those out. I want to make sure I seal my bag back up and put it aside. And then let me get the correct driver here. So that way I can put these in. Now again, if I'm interpreting this correctly, this is going to slip right like this. Now it turns out, I actually have these in there. It looks correct. Now the one thing that's bothering me is I don't see a measurement on these directions. So the question is, does the extrusion need to go all the way to the end here? And I'm going to take a chance and push it all the way to the end. And then let me just use an Allen key to sort of arrange. And let me do the same for the bottom. And then I'm just going to screw in these M510 button heads now. I might have to move this around a little bit, but that's okay. So let me screw this in and we'll come back and do the other side. As you can see, I have the one side in. I'm not tightening this too much because I just want to make sure that I'm doing this correctly. Now I'm going to slip in the other side and I'm pushing that all the way through as well. Now I just need to line up T nuts, the holes. And let's get these lined up. So there we go. And so now I'll just put the screws in. Like I said, I'm tightening them, but I can always go back and tighten these more. I'm not really too worried about this. I, I think that putting it all the way through makes sense. Otherwise, they'd be giving me measurements in the directions. Um, I think I've noted that there's 250 plus pages in the installation guide for the Voron, and it's the most detailed I've ever seen. Um, I always tell students that usually when somebody creates directions, particularly in IT and software, you take the least productive person or the person that knows the least and the least valuable and have them do the instructions. And that's why typically documentation is so bad. With the Voron, the Voron team, it, it appears they've done exactly the opposite. They have done such a phenomenal job documenting this. It's absolutely amazing. So I have both ends in. Both are screwed in. I feel really good about this. So let's look at these next steps and keep going. Okay, as we can see, this is in, and it looks like here in this bottom picture, they have slid it all the way through. So that's good. Now we're going to start with the linear rails. 
and this is the C extrusion. So let me put this piece aside, and I'm going to need to get more workspace here, which my wife's going to kill me if I move any more furniture into my office. Now, I have a D piece and two Cs, and it looks like two Cs are the longer pieces, so I'm going to put those aside. I'm going to use those. I'm going to put D off to the side. And then I have, it looks like I need the M3 T nuts. And I'm going to put those through here so we can put on the, the linear rails. I also want to go down another step here just to look at this. And I'm just looking through real quickly. So I did notice, I said, I just want to look real quick. I'm just noticing uh, something that jumped out at me here. There's something about the 300 mil millimeter fill. Now I'm doing the 350. So it's basically saying start. I need to start from the end screw. According to the directions here, if you're doing the 300 model, 300 millimeter build, you need to start with the second screw hole. So for me, there's, there's no real changes here. Let's just look at this. There is a measurement here. Let's work on getting the T-nuts installed and see where that leaves us. So I have my parts here. I have the M3 T-nuts and then the M3 8 socket heads. Now I'm going to place the T-nuts in here and then we'll come back and take a look. So let me just do those off camera and that way we can, you don't have to sit here and watch me do this. So as you can see, I have all the T-nuts installed. For my next step, I want to measure here 25 millimeters. And so moving these in a little bit. I'm just going to measure this and get a red marker here. So I'm going to apologize. I just dropped one of my linear rails. So let's measure this. Just measuring. And the linear rail needs to be 25 millimeters from the end. I'm just marking this off on both sides. And I think I can see that line well enough. I'm just going to do that on both of these extrusions. I apologize because I think my dog just walked into the room and decided you now it's a great time to start scratching and making as much noise as possible. But the dog loves to be in here with me. Okay. So let me get my linear rails and we'll line up the holes so that way it'll make it easier to screw this in. Now at this point you should only have three different linear rails left. The these are the MGN9, so they're thinner, and there's one thicker 12 that we need in a later step. So we're doing the thinner, thinner linear rails right now. And what I'm going to do is take one of these out of the package and then use it to line up all the holes so that way I can slip this all together. Now something to point out, you want to weave these little blocks on the end of your linear rail, because if you don't, if the uh, carriage comes off, the little ball bearings will come out and it snaps a little mess. But what I'm going to do is just line up these T nuts. So I've laid the linear rail uh, right along the side here at 25 millimeters. So on the other side, it's 25 millimeters in. Now I want to point out that on my 350 build, I'm using 10 T nuts, five have the long way pointed that way, five are pointed that way. And you want to be careful with that because it looks like we'll need to put some more T-nuts on here in a later step, and you're going to need that extra room at the end. So you just want to be careful. I'm doing every other hole. So I'm just trying to line these up. It looks like I'm probably going to be one, Probably need 11 in here. I'm not going to bother. I'll leave two holes empty. It'll be all right. So I have that lined up. I just want to make sure so that looks good. So then I'm going to switch over to the other rail. I'm just laying the rail up against here. I'm putting the end 
down to my 25 millimeter mark. And then I'm just pushing these around to line up against holes. I'm going to say I'm filming this on the 4th of July, so I'm going to wish everybody in the U.S. a happy 4th of July. Also, I might have to leave here shortly. Our family tradition is we do ice cream for dinner on the 4th of July, so in a moment, I might have to go downstairs and force myself to have ice cream for dinner, so I'm looking forward to that too. I have these set up. I want to put one extrusion aside. I want to make sure I have plenty of room, and I'm going to put the extrusion right here, again, lined up with my measurement, and then I have these two pieces here. Oops, not that piece. Let's see. I think it's this one. Yeah. So I have these two pieces I printed earlier, which are used to line up the extrusion. And this piece lines up the extrusion, so it's sitting right perfectly center in the rail. Now, at this point, put this aside. Let me switch my driver out. So I have my M3 eighths. Let's get out a couple of these. I'm going to carefully remove the stopper here. I don't need it anymore because I have this piece here. We'll just make sure the rail is lined up with my 25 millimeter mark. And from the look of it, this needs to be lined up a little bit better. Let's do that first hole. I'm actually going to tighten that in. And then I'm going to go down the other end, remove the blocking piece. And then I want to put the screw in here. I'm just going to tighten that in. I'm going to leave these blocking pieces on here so my carriage doesn't come off. I don't want to mess with that right now. Oh, in fact, wait, let's do this. Let's take the blocking piece off. And then I'm just going to put the stopper back in on the second hole. I'm not going to put a screw in the second hole, so that should be all right. So that's blocking the carriage from getting off here. And then let me screw in the rest of the linear rail here. So I have linear rails installed. Now I flipped over this one, so I'm looking at the bottom. So that's for the next step. So if I go to the next step, I need to put in some M5 T-nuts on the bottom. The hole on the T-nut needs to be pointed towards the outside of the extrusion, like so. Again, the hole is pointed towards the outside. This, I believe, all has to do with how we're going to be screwing things in. So the long part of a T-nut with no hole in it is always going to be pointed towards the center of the extrusion. I'm putting, installing one, roll this extrusion over, and then let's put those T-nuts in. You want to make sure you're doing the M5s, not the M3s. I already had to cut because I put the wrong ones in. Go on to the next step. Now I'm actually doing the same thing on the other side. And this explains why there's that 25 millimeter gap. That's so I can get to these T nuts. Again, long port without the hole towards the inside. So I have the M5 T nuts installed. And now we're going to install the idlers into, into the end of the rail. So let's get this installed and we'll move forward. So for my next step, I'm going to attach the idlers. So the idlers, I'm doing this orientation. I need the two M5 holes towards the bottom. If you look, there's a smaller hole up here. I don't want that. I want the two M5 holes on the bottom. And I'm looking at the bottom of the rail. So I'm on the extrusion, I'm looking at the extrusion from the bottom. I want to slip this in here. I'm going to slip that like that. And then I need two 
M516 button heads. Let me find those. I've just realized a mistake I've made. Right now, I have two M5T nuts on top of the linear rail. I go back a step. I actually need an M3T nut on the inside. So let me take these out. So I'm going to remove these. And let me rearrange these. So I need an M3 T nut on the inside and then M5 on the outside. Okay, so I fixed my arrangement here. I have an M3 right here, M5 here. So this is the top with the linear rails, the extrusion on the top, M3, then M5. So I'm going to roll this over. So I want to look at this from the bottom. Now I have the idlers. And if I look carefully here, on the one side, I have an M5 and an M3 hole. On the other, I have two M5 holes. So I want to be looking at the bottom of the extrusion. And I want to arrange this so I have the two M5 holes on the bottom. And I want to slide this in. So now I have the two M5 holes lined up with the T-nuts. And I want to look for two button heads that are M516s. So let me find those and we'll get those in idlers installed. But before I put these screws in, I want to find this little um, piece. And I want to make sure again that there's two M5 holes because there is a piece just like this with an M5 and M3. So I just want to place this like this. And I'm just threading these screws through. And I might need to, whoops, yeah, I'm going to need to move the T nuts around a little bit. Just push those. Not a big deal. Now, I want to make sure this, this little gap here is pointed towards the outside. Now, I don't think I want these too tight. If I'm interpreting this right, belts are going to go under these, so I'll probably need to take these off when I install the belts, but I'm not too worried about that. I'm just going to hand tighten them. I might need to move this around a little bit. I'm going to loosen this. Now it needs to be flush here. So the plastic needs to be flush right here. So that looks good. And let's just again put that aside. I'm going to take this one and pretty much do the same thing. Again, I want to make sure the M5 holes are on the right side. I'm just looking at the pictures here just to make sure everything looks all right, which I feel like it does. Now what we're going to need to do is this actually needs to be, we need to get the going back to the motors, and then we're putting these pieces in here. Now, my workspace here is getting really junked up, so I'm going to apologize and move some things around. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this piece. And as you can see in the instructions, the idler is pointing towards the inside. So I'm going to slip this in the end here. I'm lining the, the T-nuts up a little accent piece that goes here. And if you look carefully, you'll see there's grooves here. I'm thinking that's for the belt. So the teeth and the belt fit in there, and then there's a piece that sits right on top. But let me look and find that piece. Okay. So I found the extra little piece here. I'm going to move this down here. I think I have the holes lined up. I want to make sure the groove here sits right down onto the teeth. And I want the notch point towards the outside. Okay, so I have that side in. So I'm just going to move this over. And let me move this towards the camera a little bit. So I'm going to slip this end in. And again, the idlers are the idlers are pointing towards this way. So they're pointing towards each other. Now this accent piece is oriented like this. Let me stand up so I can see. I gotta move my T 
seen dots around a little bit. So let's just get this first hole in. Like I said, I apologize for these awkward angles. It's just I've really run out of workspace. Plus, I probably need to clean my office pretty badly. Okay, so I have that in. So now, let's see if we can see this. As you can see, I, I have that. I'm just going to set that down and let's look at the next steps. So, so what I'm going to do is stop here and then I'll break this into two different videos. So in the next part of this video, I'll put the rest of the gantry together. And hopefully you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. Thanks. Have a good night. Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description. You can set up a 15-minute help session with me, and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day.